My name is Carlos Sir Slamalot Barrientes. Grew up in Seattle, born in Texas, uh, currently live in Snohomish. I started in the uh, early 80s with the Emerald City Breakers, actually. I kept hearing about uh, this, this breakdancing thing. And I was already, at that time, a little bit involved in martial arts. And I, was, I loved gymnastics, so I was already limber and ready to go for that. And then I heard about this guy named Flex and Junior Alafayo, and they had a group, they, their very first group in Seattle called the Emerald City Breakers. And my friend Smiley, uh, Steven Sanchez, says, dude, you got to come and try out. They're looking, they're looking for new guys. Is this this thing is exploding. And I was like, what is it? And I've seen people do it on Soul Train and TV shows, but I didn't know what it was. I didn't know it was called breakdancing, but I knew I was pretty good at it. I was like, okay, this is easy. I love gymnastics. I went to Sharpless Junior High in 1970s. 77 and I took gymnastics there and so I, I already knew flips and tucks and, and, and windmills and so breakdancing to me was just a combination of everything so I just learned to uh, mix it all together and came up with what I came up with. <laughs> I think breaking, breaking, breakdancing was created because of the music, because of the breaks. When all that stuff came out I learned to put it all together to co combine it all and make it into something spectacular, which was, you know, individual moves, whether it's my power glide or hand glides or tabletops or whatever. I, I learned to take the music, count it into what I was doing and, uh, and create a, something uh, that became what I was known for. Rainier Beach High School was having a competition and they said, hey, we want you to try out, do, do whatever you know how to do. I said, like, well, I don't know what this is okay, I'll do some gymnastics. I did some Broncos. I did a, a split wide open uh, and did a little bit of footwork. And they go, you're in. Who else was in the Emerald City Breakers? Uh, Flex, Junior Alifile, Dante, rest in peace. He was at one of the events here. Uh, Curtis Washington, Jay Bateman, rest in peace. He was also, he came with me with Seattle City Breakers. Ray Martinez, a.k.a. Uh, Baby Ray. So we, I was with them for maybe a few months and then... Uh, we didn't like the way things were going, so Jay Bateman, myself, uh, decided to start the Seattle City Breakers, and we took Baby Ray with us and Ginger Ginger Fox, a a a.k.a. Miss Froxy, and uh, Curtis Washington, and we started the Seattle City Breakers. Before Emerald City Breakers, before I, I auditioned to them for them, the main guy was part of a, a gang, and he kept hearing about me, and... I was on a bus, we were going downtown looking for trouble, and I wear a trench coat with a shotgun, sawed off shotgun, because I was I was lost. I was lost. And this guy was looking for he kept hearing about this Carlos El Padrino. He they chased the bus down that I was in. He turned out to be a, a brother of mine and the leader of the uh, Emerald City Breakers. But if we would have crossed if we would have actually stopped the bus that night, I don't know what would have happened. I probably wouldn't be here. <laughs> I was headed down a <laughs> pretty dark road. Uh, and then the hip-hop culture came out, and my eyes just lit up. I said, hey, I can do this. Um, and so I left my other life behind and focused on this. I wasn't great at first, but it took me years. It took a long... If, if you want to become a dancer, you're not going to learn overnight. Don't don't think, hey, I gave this a couple weeks, I'm, I'm done. This takes years of focus, hard work, commitment, um, sacrifice, it, it didn't happen overnight. We didn't become who we became, you know, overnight. It took years, but um, it was worth it. But that happened just a few months before I met him. And then I, I realized years later, it was he that was chasing down the bus who was the leader of the group that I had become a part of. Before hip hop came out and the hip hop culture and dancing and, and break dancing, uh, there was a lot of division, a lot of gangs. And then once that came out, all of a sudden that just disappeared. It's like everybody's the same color now. Everybody's the same group. I mean, now you had different groups, but they were breakdancing groups. Now we would battle and dance against each other. There was no more fighting. Um, and in Seattle City Breakers, I was the only leader. And I would say, this is going to be our routine. And then, of course, we had a manager 
who really helped our situation because we were performing in Canada every other weekend and we were making 1500 bucks at that time a show I don't I, I don't know how that even that's even possible it's because that's that's a lot of money now Jim Clark was our manager and he was really good with with, with words we were doing uh, sonic shows we were doing fashion shows and we even got involved in training synchronized swimmers back in the 84 Olympics and we were training Tracy and I can't remember the other one but that was one of our first gigs if you can believe that. The coolest place I've, I think we performed uh, in 84, we did a private party for Arnold Palmer. He was a famous golfer. And uh, we sat there and showed him pop moves how to swing a golf club. <laughs> that uh, That's also, I guess, the weirdest place. I mean, here, here's Arnold Palmer. He's like trying to pop and, and swing a golf club. We, we did a show for a congressman, but we toured with him in a day one day and we did many different bars say vote for this guy vote for this guy yeah my dad was extremely proud he i, I, I don't know why i mean it's dancing i'm dancing on the street for for pennies but he was so proud of me and he would just get excited when i would uh, do a show on tv or or and he would call all his friends i was like and my mom would say oh my god you should have seen your dad he was like look at my son look at my son i was like really okay that was kind of cool it was it was just it was amazing to hear him speak some of the some of some of the things that would come out of his mouth I would never hear before other than because of breakdancing. When I first started seeing what they call breakdancing breaking, uh, to me, the guys that I looked up to were dynamic rockers, high uh, excuse me, uh, New York City Breakers and uh, Rock City Crew. Those were the three big ones. And in '84. Uh, Somehow, I became friends with the manager of Dynamic Rockers, which was Jose Del, Del Rosario. And at the time, uh, Seattle City Breakers, we were winning competition after competition after time. We only lost once, and that's to our old group. But they had like 10 guys. We had four, and we came in second. The Emerald City Connection, which was the Emerald City Breakers reform. But they had like 10 guys. mix -a -Lot was a DJ. Ed Locke was there. He was promoting the show, and Nassiness Rodriguez was handing us our, our trophies. I, I got a picture of that somewhere. And so I got this idea of battling the East Coast. I said, hey, I think we're just as good as you guys. But it took years, two years to, to bring them here, but we, we finally happened. But, and we got, to, we got to battle the guys who I idolized, who, who made me want to be better. I, I remember their plane running late. We were on stage, we were waiting, their plane was running late, and I felt bad for them. They were jet lagged. They started walking on the stage and we're like, whoa. Like we're seeing superstars and they pretty much were superstars to pretty any everybody in the world they they were the, the 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 pioneers and we knew that it was little lap it was mr wave it was flip rock it was uh alien nest and we had teela rock uh, performing sparky d i don't think dj red alert showed up he was on the bill we started battling and they were basically and i'm not downing them because I, I love those guys basically what we saw on beach street and we were, at that point, doing stuff that was, I don't think they seen before. I think they might have been like, what is going on here? These guys way up here in the, by Alaska are, are doing moves like this? And an interesting thing happened on stage. The crowd started booing them and throwing pennies at them. Was, and, 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 and it was just going on for minutes. And finally, Ziggy from my group, my younger brother, he got on the mic and said, hey, what are you doing? We're the ones that are biters. These guys are the pioneers. What do you think you're doing? Why are you booing them? These, this, you're looking at the New York City breakers here. And so we all mix in together and we just did a big cipher. We just basically did a freak freestyle. It, it was no longer a battle. It's funny that uh, after that show, several of them actually moved here. I, I'm guessing they wanted to see what, the, what we're putting in the water. I don't know. I was good at power moves. I was always good at anything to do with strength, broncos, tucks, hand spins. And so I took a, my, a hand spin and I brought my body in together. I pushed up and invented something called a power glide. And now they're doing it. Everyone does it, but now everyone got different names for it. But I, I invented that at the Seattle Center in 1984 on a parquet floor, the fastest floor on earth. That thing was so slick. What we decided to do at a routine 
or as far as individual battles or, or individual moves depended on the floor. If the floor was tough, you couldn't spin, then we would reduce our spinning moves and do more power stuff like Broncos and windmills. I would carry a bottle of Pledge uh, for linoleums or hardwood floors that I'd wipe it down um, and that would improve any floor. The floor made a, a huge difference. We started on concrete. We started in, at the corner of uh, Fourth and across from Bon Marche at McDonald's corner, battling on concrete. But I think I still got a ball spot from head spinning. We would create hematomas on the back of our our, our shoulders, but that was a price you paid if uh, you wanted to have the be part of it. Early '80s is when the Jerry Curl became really popular. If you remember Full First, you remember the curls, Creasy, Creasy the Activator. When uh, we would battle guys like High Performance, who all had Jerry, they all had to go get Jerry curls. They would actually have the advantage because they'd get on the floor, grease it up, and we would just slip slide in the way. We would almost have to say, hey, you guys battle over there. We're gonna break over here because we can't, we can't break after you've already greased up the floor. I thought it looked great, but, it, but we couldn't break after they, after they did. There's two names that we hear we heard about back in the 80s, two big names that we heard. One of them was Ziggy, and of course, one of them was me, Sir so a lot. I'm not afraid to say it. Everyone knew Ziggy, everyone knew Ziggy. Ziggy was the most popular b-boy in the, in, the, in the 80s. Ziggy and I were actually friends. I call him my brother because we were friends since we, I was 10, he was six, seven, eight, whatever. Uh, we, we both grew up in projects, and then of course the b-boying came out, breakdancing came out, and we, we, we still became friends. And then after it all, when underground, breakdancing, uh, he disappeared. Well, I started doing some research. I said, where's Ziggy? I keep hearing he was, he, was, he got eaten by a shark at, uh, surfing. He did this happened, that happened. And finally, his nephew in Hawaii said, hey, are you Carlos Durante? used to be Seattle City Breakers. I'm Ziggy's uncle. I said, oh, here it is. Okay, I guess there's where I'm gonna, he's gonna let me know. He's alive and well. He's asking about you. I was like, what? Give me his number, and then of course I get a hold of him, and, and the 2011 was his big return. That's why they called it the Seattle City Breaker reunion, the return of Ziggy. Yeah, we thought he was dead, and here he is. Why did he disappear? Maybe to find himself, maybe to 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 get away from the, you know, the, the limelight for a while. I mean, I've never actually talked to him about it, but if I had to guess, I'd say just to maybe find himself and uh, you know, rediscover yourself, find a, find a new. Uh, new path. What a lot of people don't realize about the hip-hop culture in the beginning of hip-hop and the culture itself is I made a lot of friends who I consider brothers now. One is Nasty Nest Rodriguez. Every time I see him, it's like we go back to 83, 82. Uh, he used to, I remember doing his shows way back then, Sir Mix a lot. I used to go up to, to Nasty Nest's studio and he goes, hey, what do you think of this song? I he'd play it. I was like, wow. So he would show me songs before they would have even got airplay. I got to be friends with high performance Maurice, Ron, Jesse, Lonnie, Emerald Street Boys. They were they hosted our or they performed at our very one of our very first show was Summer Break eighty four. People don't give the Emerald Street Boys the credit they deserve. They deserve to be in some kind of Hall of Fame somewhere because they they are who I remember being the first in the Pacific Northwest. They used to throw shows here at the Washington Hall. I don't think they get the, the recognition that they deserve. We don't all get to see each other like we want to, but uh, whenever there's a ch chance that uh, we're all gonna get together, then we, we do. The only reason I'm still friends with them was because of the hip hop culture, because of, of break dancing, because of hip hop. I'm, I'm blown away by today's um, B-boys. Mm -hmm. It they've taken it, They have taken it to a level that I've never imagined it ever going. It, it blows my mind. I was like, wow, I could have just never imagined they could have done this. Another way I see it is they couldn't have done that if we would have started down here. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't have started down here if NYC and Rocksteady and Dynamic Rockers wouldn't have started where they started. I'm, I'm blown away. I'm blown away by some of the Red Bull competition I'm watching and some of the videos I see on, on uh, YouTube. And I'm like, wow. And, then, and, and once in a while, it's like, hey, that's my move. I invented that. When I re watch breakdancing now, it just it's more power than I've ever seen or ever imagined. It takes so much for a guy to lift his entire body off the ground, 
do a couple rotations in the air without touching anything. I mean, some of the upside down windmills and and I, I don't see how they can improve on what how good they are now. How can they get any better from what I've seen? How can they make that better? Some of the stuff I, I can't imagine how I, I think about it. I can do it in my mind, and then at sixty years old, I think about saying, "No, I better not. I better not. <laughs> I won't be able to get up." Can you call nine one one? When I go home tonight, I'll lay in bed. I say, "I was part of that," and that is just amazing. That is just it's, it's crazy to think I was there watching, you know, hip hopping or, or rapping before rapping became rapping. And you don't realize what you're what you're part of until you, you retrospect. And you're like, wow, look back and think, I, I was there. It, it, it's, it's really hard to explain. I go home and lay at night and think about it, then it blows my mind. As I look back on it, it saved my life.